Hi, we're here with Dennis Michelle. He is Senior Vice President of Customer Service at Discover. And we're gonna talk about working from home. We're gonna talk about servicing and also what the new normal looks like post COVID-19. Hi Dennis, thanks for joining us. How you doing Larry? Thanks for having me, appreciate being here. Good, uh, so I guess walk me through, you know, how COVID-19 affected Discover and, and how you basically, you know, move people remote. Well, we, like everybody else, were kind of planning for the crisis, not understanding how big or how significant it was going to be. But on March 11th, when the World Health Organization declared it a national or global pandemic, uh, we started developing our plans to move people home. Uh, we made people our number one priority, getting them to the safety of their homes and protecting their well-being. Uh, so we developed a plan to get everybody home. So. We're a little bit advantaged in that we're a direct bank, so we don't have branch locations. So for our non-contact center employees, uh, they're generally all equipped with a laptop and have the ability to work remotely. Um, our contact center employees, and we have just shy of 9,000, uh, they're not equipped similarly. So we had an initial plan that we developed on March 12th to have 50% of them working from home within a three to four week period, which at the time, to be honest, we thought was uh, pretty ambitious and aggressive. Um, and then we, you know, things were evolving very quickly. So on March 13th, we recognized this thing was coming pretty fast. Uh, it was going to probably be bigger than what we had initially anticipated. And we developed a plan to get as many people home as we could over the course of the next week. So within the first week, we had moved about 70% of our contact center employees home. On March 13th, essentially all of our other employees who had been equipped were working from home. And within the period of about 10 days, we had 95% of all of our employees working from home remotely. So what technology did you need to implement and what did you already have laying around when you move people home at scale? Yeah, that's a good question because uh, we were a little bit advantaged in that respect as well. So about 23% of our contact center employees were already working from home. And as I mentioned, all of the non-contact center employees work from a laptop and have the ability to work remotely. And we're pretty, pretty flexible with our work from home uh, guidelines. So uh, from a contact center perspective, we had our Delaware office. Uh, we had already had a program for several years with a military base there, the Dover Air Force Base, where we had created a program where we were creating jobs for military members and their spouses. And then we later expanded it uh, to their family members. So. As you can imagine, Dover's not too far from our Delaware office, and our general work at home strategy was to have people working from home connected to one of our four US based sites. But uh, with military movement, people being deployed, we did have people working around the country from that military work at home program. And that caused us to look for uh, technology that would support remote work more broadly and at scale. So, so we, we, what we use is a thing called Thin Client. Uh, or virtual desktops, uh, which just enables us, people can use their monitor at home, they don't have to take all of their equipment home. Um, it's secure, it um, essentially emulates our network if you are at a, using a desktop uh, at one of our offices. And we had equipped our entire Delaware office to have thin clients um, in the physical location. So they were able to work from home, but it was more just to equip them using the thin clients because uh, simple to administer, uh, secure, you can push software easier. So it seemed like something we might want to pursue even in our physical location. So, so we had a lot of thin clients, a lot of inventory on hand when the crisis hit, and that enabled us to move very quickly. Um, as you can imagine, and I'm sure you're aware, supply chains were pretty dried up. There was a lot of demand for this type of technology supporting remote work, but we had already several thousand in inventory that we could deploy. That put us in a great position to proceed with the mass mobilization. How, how does servicing change when you are working from home versus when you're in a call center? You know, um, it's, a, it's a conversation that we have a lot to discover because we're extremely employee focused. That's why we put our employees first when we started mobilizing everybody to home. Um, but we're also very customer centric. And a lot of our philosophies around our culture, taking care of our people, enabling them to be successful, keeping them highly enriched, and that'll translate to great experiences on the phone. So, so one of the things we've contemplated, even when thinking about, do we wanna make work at home even bigger, even pre-crisis, is how do you replicate the great culture that we have in our offices? How do you replicate that at home? So um, we're learning right now, obviously. Um, this is kind of a, 
a very large A-B test where we now have everybody at home and we're learning a lot just in terms of their ability to perform. Uh, are we losing anything in the way of productivity? And most importantly, are they able to still take care of our customers and deliver uh, the award-winning service that we're known for. So um, I've been really um, pleased. Uh, I think they've done a remarkable job in their resilience and their ability to continue to service our customers. A lot of that's dependent on the technology. The technology has held up extremely well. And then our managers just being in close contact, keeping that level of connectivity really high uh, to support them and ensure that they're still in the best position to take care of our customers. And, and when you're operating a customer care center, what are your most valuable metrics to track? So for us, it's really primarily the, how the customer views the experience with us. So we assess that a number of ways. Uh, we have an internal team that listens to a lot of calls and then the calls are scored based on, do we deliver on our brand personality, which is essentially being friendly, helpful, refreshing, and then are we taking care of their needs? And importantly, not just their stated need, but are we getting to the underlying need? Because what we find is there's generally, somebody might call and ask about a purchase or ask about their balance, but if you don't ask, there's generally an underlying need that is really gets to the source of why they're calling or reaching out to us. So, so that's how we score calls internally. And then we also do send out a survey uh, to assess, was the customer helped? Were they pleased and satisfied with the agent that helped them? Were they satisfied with Discover? And then importantly, was the effort low? Did they, did they not have to expend a lot of effort to resolve their inquiry, which, which we see as a real predictor of, of future loyalty? So net promoter score, effort score, those are the primary. But there are productivity metrics. How long do we spend on each call? Um, are we keeping our agents highly occupied so that they're spending the majority of their time engaging with our customers? Uh, those are the productivity metrics. So as, as we move forward and the economy reopens and all that, what do you think the new normal looks like? Very different. Um, I think in a lot of respects, I think uh, consumer behaviors are changing and we're a, we're a bank, a full service bank uh, with bank products and of course uh, credit card as well. So, um, you know, we've seen like everybody has reductions in sales as people are, you know, exercising their stay at home orders and not able to get out and spend. I think a lot of consumers, and you see it in the in the data, are using on, you know shopping online. Uh, Amazon's clearly done extremely well. So I think people that in the past may have been a little reluctant to shop online, there was already a natural migration occurring that will likely be accelerated. Um, you know, services like food delivery, grocery delivery, I think will probably become more prevalent as people have used them, and and if it worked, have gotten more comfortable with them. And in banking, I think, um, you know, digital, using digital properties. Um, people have been migrating at a pretty rapid pace to web, mobile. Uh, in our case, we introduced messaging. So it's an alternative channel to phones where you can text us your inquiries. It's been growing 10% month over month organically since we launched uh, over two years ago. Um, but during the crisis, starting mid-March, the volumes doubled there. So customers... Uh, maybe partly because they didn't think they could reach their bank because a lot of our competitor banks have extremely long hold times and also because they would prefer to text and service on their own time. So we're seeing, like I said, double the volume there. So people are naturally migrating to alternative channels to reach their bank outside of phone. But um, in terms of work at home, I think there will likely be more people working remotely. Uh, as I mentioned, we've been, I've been really surprised, not you know, I expected our performance to be good, but our performance has been comparable at home as to what it is in the office. And that's with a mass deployment that was not facilitated the way we would typically move people home. It would have been more measured. Uh, there would have been more training. It would have been more structured. Uh, but the performance has been fantastic. So that's something we'll be talking about because we're learning a lot. So do you, do you see a situation where your return to work plan might be, you know, if you had 23% of folks from home, that might be like half? Or, or I guess, how, how do you see that playing out in terms of how you manage people? Yeah, you know, it's a great question. I, I could speculate on the number of employees that will now say, hey, I've had a taste of working at home and I like it and I'd prefer to stay at home. Um, we have a, a sub, we have a, a Corona crisis team that's kind of helped manage all the decisions through the deployment home and through the early stages of communication and testing and, and all the things that we did to support our employees through the crisis. But uh, even earlier today, we now have a sub uh, committee or sub team that's working on what will the transition look like moving back to the office. 
And uh, there's a lot of opinions and a lot of um, speculation about um, what will the interest level be? Will there still be some trepidation about coming back? Um, we're going to put out a, um, a survey later this week just uh, to understand amongst our employees that are now working from home, how many of them want to come back immediately? Uh, they maybe have separation anxiety. They miss the, the social stimulation. Uh, maybe their home is not well equipped for work at home or they're having a hard time performing at the same level. So, so we'll be able to quickly identify what percent of our workforce does that represent. And then the second might be the way that wants somebody else to go first, kind of work out the kinks and then there'll be a fast follower. And we know, uh, we're not naive, there will likely be a lot of employees who like being at home, but we'll have to separate is, do they like being at home now? Because in, in a lot of cases, their kids are home with schools closed. Um, they like being home because it's much safer. Um, and when you remove the emotion of what we're all dealing with through the crisis, um, what would their preference be? And uh, we'll be evaluating it. If, if people have performed as well or better at home versus the office, certainly there could be a case to uh, to allow more people to stay from home. So that's something we'll be evaluating quite a bit and, and kind of developing a plan for an orderly return to work. And then, you know, we'll do it by region as local governments remove the stay at home order. Um, so that'll give us an opportunity to do it in a staged way, which will help with an organized return to work. Will your facilities be able to handle social distancing? I mean, every office is different, but you know, I know mine has an open floor plan and yeah. we're going to have to spread out a little more, I think. Yeah, um, that's, yeah. How no, does good that question. work in a call center? So for us, we have what we call kind of mega centers. So we have four sites, as I mentioned, they're all in the United States. So uh, one in Delaware, one in Phoenix, Arizona, one in Salt Lake City, Utah, and then one uh, in New Albany, Ohio, which is a suburb of Columbus. And they're very big. They're 100,000 foot plus, in most cases, 300,000 foot facilities. So as we gradually transition back, we already, even as we were moving them out, we were socially distancing. So we have flags already set up. Our facilities are already set up for the appropriate level of social distancing as we were moving people out. And then as we started transitioning them back to the office, it's already set up in a way that they would be appropriately separated. But it's a good question. And I think we're, um, again, advantaged in that scenario as well, because we have very large offices that are open space, but give us the ability to create the right level of separation. Anything I didn't ask that I should have? Um, no, you asked a lot of good questions about what I think we're all kind of enduring and, and, and learning through. Um, I guess I would just comment on, from a Discover perspective, the importance of putting employees first. Um, you know, we've all been inundated with communication from our banks, from our different service providers. They generally lead with customer because that's the audience of the communication and then employees and then community. And we're focused on the same, but I think putting the employee first, ensuring that first they were safe, they were home, um, put us in a really good position to take care of our customers in a time when they needed us as well. But prioritizing employees first, um, they were incredibly resilient, uh, always committed to our customers. And then I mentioned a few of the capabilities that we've been developing more in response to emerging technology and how consumer behaviors were already kind of moving even before the crisis. And those capabilities put us in a really good position to take care of our customers while ensuring that our employees were extremely safe. Okay, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Larry. I appreciate it. Thank you.